Hi. Obviously not the most urgent pressing issue, but have there been any discussions or updates on your own contract situation? No. Nothing? Nothing. I think obviously if, if it was a player in this situation, we'd all be asking you every week about his future and what you're going to do yeah. and how Edu is dealing with it. Is that fair <coughs> to think that we ask the same question of you and the fans are wondering? It can be, but uh, I am really happy. I still have a year um, in my contract. That's a long, a long time in football as well. And um, the players are happy. The club is happy. Um, no issues. I think it was a couple of years ago you, the club spoke about providing clarity before the summer and transfers and to show that you'd be here in the long term. Mm. Is that kind of the goal again? Do you think once this busy fixture period is over? I don't know. I'm just focusing on, on the games and, and winning football <coughs> matches and, and that's the, the most important thing right now. Thank you. Hi, Mikel. Hi. Um, I think there was disappointment amongst neutrals that the game on Sunday wasn't more exciting there and, and there weren't more goals. But considering how high the level is now, two teams that are at the top of their game, should we expect that sort of game more often? It's so tight, there's rarely any mistakes that we're going to have games that are so tight and there aren't many goals in it. Is that what we should expect now in, in this type of race? Uh, it can happen. I think uh, between us in the last few games, it's been like that. The last three games, when you look at uh, the margins, um, are like this. Um, with Liverpool, it's been different. It's been more open, it's been more games, it's been more hectic. Um, depending as well, I think, the approach of, of both teams, I think. Which one do you prefer? Game or a game like one or something. The ones I win. I love those ones. <laughs> and just, um, just, just um, finally, um, you haven't scored from a set piece in the last four games. Now I know that isn't a, a hugely long time, but are you thinking you maybe need to kind of get back to the drawing board and, and, and drop a few new plays? The team started to kind of um, figure out. Uh, for sure, the, the teams obviously try to stop. Um, um, when you have big threats from different areas, and and we constantly. We're going to have to try to, to adapt or, or tweak things just to, to create problems to the opponents. Hopefully we can score tomorrow. Hey, just, just picking up on what Jordan was talking about, Mikel, but, and you also mentioned earlier that you left your ideology aside at, at City. W was that difficult? I didn't say that. Well, you did. You said you'd leave your ego and ideology aside. Yeah, to do certain things, not to be a completely different team. Okay. It's, it's like a, cool. like when you have a short blanket, sometimes you have to cover here and your feet are there. But if you want to cover your feet, then your chest is there. So you have to tweak certain things sometimes. So, so, go on. so just explain exactly what you meant by that, the, the, the tweaks to your ideology just at City. <coughs> I cannot tell you that. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we adapt to certain things and, and they did as well. Yeah. They did certain things that they never do differently. Uh, and and nah. no. But uh, but it's what it is. That's, that's, that's a game. Try to hide your possible weaknesses and biggest strengths of the opponent and try to expose theirs. Because yeah. I was going to say as well, that Mourinho always used to say that he, he could always lock down a game for nil-nil. That, that was him. Yeah. He, he almost said that that was kind of the easy bit, mm. uh, and obviously the harder bit is obviously trying to win the game. I suppose. Yeah. What, what, how do I don't have this ability. Uh, hopefully, I can, I can, <laughs> I can uh, improve and get that ability to have the certainty that I can have that. But especially against Man City, and when you look in the last three years that they have scored in every single match, I think it's it's very difficult. But we are on it. That's for sure. And just finally, anything that you can say about what you and Pep spoke about after the game. A lot about families, about both teams, uh, about the times that we were together as well, because you are there in the environment and, and it's really good. We hug each other, we what met with other game, players. Man. Yeah, that it was, he was really close and, uh, and it was tough for both teams. And, uh, and yeah, and we might have to see each other if everything goes like we want, but let's see. Hey, Sam. I'm Mikhail. With Mikhail Saka about two weeks ago with England squad, he obviously, as a precaution, left the squad before the two friendlies. How is it in terms of managing him? Because obviously we've seen throughout the season yeah. where he'd have to hobble off the pitch in pain and miraculously comes back the next game and, and starts. As a manager, how do you manage that? And do you have his long-term future in mind in terms of the impact he has on his body? Uh, well, he, he wasn't with the national team because he was injured. So he had a, a muscular issue. So. Uh, and then he trained very little, and then he played, and um, and yeah, we had to take him off because really the risk of injuring the player was um, was pretty high, and and hopefully 
today he can train and, and he's good and, and he's done it many times and he's a really robust player and, and we can have him for the rest of the games. Going forward, is that on your mind though, his, his long term health and fitness because of the knocks he's been taking over the season? Yeah, this was more a, a muscular issue that, uh, than a knock, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's, he's a player that has a lot of contact, he has so much uh, minutes under his belt in the last few seasons and, uh, and you have to manage him. We saw recently Ethan Winery signed his first professional contract. How good is he and what's the potential on him? Because obviously there's a lot of noise around how yeah. he's the next big star. But how good I'm is really he? happy. It was a great day. He had uh, all his family um, and important people around him. A really proud moment to see another academy graduate uh, signing his pro contract. Uh, he's very close to the first team and the opportunity is there. Now he, he needs to take it. Just one more. With um, Aaron Ramsdale, there's recent reports of him being linked to Newcastle. Is there any... You know, I'm not going to comment on, on those things. And finally, we got to Gary. Is there any suggestion on Aaron could be here next year? Is there a situation where... There Suggestion? Here? No, there is a big reality that Aaron is here because he's our player and he's got a contract. Question, um, to come to rotation thing, is it, is, would you ever have a situation where you might have 18 players of similar ability like Pep where you could freely rotate and they would all eventually have similar minutes over a season or do you or is your model slightly different in I would love that to have 22 or 20 instead of 18 where they where the minutes would all be yeah that you change and, and and one is better than the other one the other one is better than the other one the week after that raises the level and for sure you're going to win more games I don't know. That's depending on how much we have to <laughs> to spend, and as well how much we, how good we are to to evolve the players that we have to get to that level, and uh, and obviously the academy, which is a key thing.